Hello, welcome back to another episode of Nobody is Doing It Right, the podcast for those who are uncertain. My name is Kat. I am one of these perpetually uncertain people. And if you don't know what I do, I talk about personal growth, self-development, self-awareness. I offer one-to-one calls for anybody who wants to talk about these topics in more detail. And I also have a membership you can join on my website where I write weekly articles about these topics. I also upload my weekly TikTok lives uh, as audio files in this membership as well. I'm also planning to do book discussions on there, um, also sharing a few interesting links uh, throughout the month. So if you're interested, you can go ahead and sign up for that. But for today's video, I want to talk about something that I don't think I've actually talked about in depth on my podcast before. I think I've sprinkled it in throughout the topics, but I haven't really talked about avoidant attachment or avoidant tendencies. And if you don't know, I've mentioned it a few times already, but I am a fearful avoidant, which means I have both anxious tendencies in my attachment style and avoidant tendencies. And it depends on who I'm interacting with, whether my anxiousness will come out or my avoidance will. And this attachment doesn't really only apply to romantic partnerships. It also applies to friendships. And it also, of course, applies to family, right? Because that's where you learn your attachment initially. So I had a situation last week with a friend of mine that made me really realize something about my avoidance and gave me some perspective on why people do these avoidant things and why the things they do, the things that avoidant people do, should not be taken personally if you're on the receiving end of it, because it has nothing to do with you and your worth. And I think that's the biggest thing with, when we talk about avoidance, everybody gets really, really mad. Everyone really hates avoidance, which I understand because their actions can come off as very cold, very aggressive, very directed and pointed towards you and how you're not good enough. Because oftentimes what avoidance will do is the moment you start getting closer, um, they will pull away or they'll push you away. And then oftentimes you might see an avoidance circling back to another partner or to a new partner or, you know, the cycle perpetuates in this way where they get close to somebody and the moment they get close, because it's scary to get close to someone, they pull away, they push them away, and then they start fresh with someone new. Because with avoidance, anyone that has avoidance, the beginning of these relationships or friendships even are safe. It's safe in the beginning. You can get close, you can be open because you don't really know each other yet. You're not super close enough to be vulnerable enough that the other person's going to see your dark messiness inside. And that's what avoidance are trying to avoid the most, having other people see them, even though they desperately and genuinely want connection as we all do, right? It's just that when it comes to avoidance, they are less willing to, um, they're less willing to hold on to people or to show up for people because to do so is very threatening and scary. And I will explain why. We're going to go into the details of this because I made a TikTok video about it this past week and it took off and there were a lot of like angry comments. Not a lot. I mean, some people were really happy that I'm talking about this from my perspective and giving the insight, Um, but some people were really angry. And I think the anger comes from the fact that we take it too personally when an avoidant does something avoidant towards us. It's not about us ultimately. And I know if like, of course, yes, we're in relationship to them. So of course it is somewhat about us, but it's not about our worth, our value. And what they do does not dictate whether or not we're worthy. And it doesn't like, it doesn't matter if that person thinks you're worthy or not worthy. It doesn't matter. You are the gatekeeper of your worth and your value. Okay. So we're going to talk about more of this throughout this episode, but the situation that happened with a friend of mine is she was, we were having a, like a texting conversation and she was talking about how she felt very uh, lonely at the moment and she didn't feel like there's anyone there for her. She lives, she doesn't live near me or anything. And my initial instinct was to text to her and say, oh, I'm always here. And that's genuinely how I feel because of course I want to be a good friend. Good friends are there for their friends, of course. But the moment I typed out that message before I sent it, I felt my avoidance creep up to the surface. And what my avoidance was telling me in that moment is, okay, don't say that. Don't commit to that because what if you can't deliver and you want to be able to deliver for your friend because you like your friend and you don't want to disappoint her. So don't commit because if you commit right now and say, I'm always here for you. What if one day in the future she needs you and you can't deliver because, you know, like something came up or you're, you're feeling you're in a weird headspace yourself. Or what if you're just not good enough to be able to be a friend that you want to be the kind of friend that you want to be? So you might as well just not say anything. You might as well just stay, just don't say anything. Don't commit to anything. Don't promise anything. 
And that's where the avoidance is, right? Right there. It's like, I'd rather avoid showing any sort of vulnerability. I'd rather avoid being there and stepping up for a friend, even though I want to. Like, I do want to. We all, we want to. We'd rather avoid it than commit to it and, and lean into it and then potentially disappoint that person in the future and not be able to be the friend that we want to be or the partner we want to be. Because ultimately, anyone who has avoidant tendencies, their core wound is that they are not good enough. And that kind of is what dictates a lot of our behavior. Now, if you're more aware of it, um, as I am, because I've, I've really worked on this and I've tried my best to be very aware of it. When you're more aware of it, it's easy to see it for what it is. You know, in that moment, I knew I was like, oh, the reason I'm I'm avoiding saying that, which ultimately I did say it to her. And I and then I also explained to her how I was feeling and she responded very positively about it. So that was great. It was a great little exchange, but I thought I would share it. Um, the reason you're avoiding being vulnerable and open is because you fear like I'm not good enough. So if I do this and then I can't, uh, I can't show up in the way I want to, I can't deliver, then that's just going to validate that I'm not good enough. The irony though is by not being vulnerable, by not allowing yourself to connect and allowing someone to also step up and meet you halfway, you're also proving to yourself that you're not good enough. You know, so that, that's the tricky part with avoidance. You kind of get trapped in this cycle in this loop and you have to break out of it to really see what it is but it's difficult to do that of course because if you've been taught that vulnerability is unsafe if connection is unsafe like deep intimacy is unsafe then yeah of course it's gonna be really hard to break out of those cycles constantly um and I, I, i'm saying this as somebody who has done this work is still constantly doing this work and still sees it within myself even though i've gone to the place where i can communicate it now i can see it for what it is i can like pick it out and say, look, oh, this is my avoidance, you know, rearing its head. Um, it's still difficult. Every single time that I'm faced with something that makes, that triggers my avoidance, I feel that discomfort and I, and it's like a effort to push through it. And not everyone can do that, at least not immediately. It's not easy. So a lot of the comments to this video where I explained the situation with my friend and I talked about how, you know, it's not that they that these avoidant people who are, you know, not showing up for you, not being vulnerable, not stepping up, it's not that they don't think you deserve better. It's not that they don't think you're good enough. It's that they do, realistically, unless that person is just like, you know, just a sh someone who's fine being a shitty person and, you know, but there's a difference between attachment and character. And of course your attachment and your character can overlap, but th there's a difference. Anyway, if it's someone that's genuinely like a friend and wants to be there and, you know, you can see it in them. It's not that they don't think you're worthy of the effort that that the vulnerability, the stepping up and all that. It's that they know you are. They know you're worthy of it. And that's exactly what terrifies them about stepping up and doing that stuff because they feel like, wow, this friend and I'm, I'm using myself as an example here, this situation. And this is like purely like platonic. So imagine how much more intense and difficult it can be with a romantic partner where there's often more stakes associated to it. But with my friend, you know, I like her. I think she's amazing. She's such a great friend. She's so cool. I want to be there for her, right? That's that's the mentality in your head. Like I want this person deserves a good friend. And what if that good friend is not me? What if I can, like to have her feel like she can lean on me when I don't even think I'm worthy or capable of being leaned on in that way? makes me feel like, oh, I shouldn't make her think that I can handle that because then what if it disappoints her, right? That's the internal dialogue going on. So it's not that that person thinks you're you're undeserving, you're not good enough, and that's why they're not showing up, that's why they're not giving you their time, that's why they're pulling away. It's that they think you are, and that's exactly what terrifies them. They, they feel like they can't match you, they can't step up to you. But the person on the receiving end of it, which I have also been, because again, I'm a fearful avoidant, so I have anxious tendencies and my anxiousness will be triggered when I'm faced with an, a person who's even more avoidant than me. Um, the person on the receiving end of these avoidant situations will feel, will really internalize that and take that as, oh, I'm not good enough. Like, that's why this, this person doesn't think I'm good enough. And this person doesn't think, doesn't uh, want to step up. They don't want to do better for me. I'm not worthy of them doing better. And it's like, no, we really have to separate the, the self-worth that's associated to this. Because when I explained this to my friend and I, I told her how I was feeling, even though I sent the message anyway and I said to her, I genuinely mean this, but th I'm just explaining to you, like, I felt very vulnerable before I, uh, I sent this because of this situation. She was like, oh, thanks for saying that. I appreciate your honesty, you know. And then she explained to me that her ex used to do something similar. Obviously, I, I assume with less awareness and being able to communicate it. But she said that it made her feel like she was too high maintenance. 
And that to me gave me even more insight onto the the way people receive this avoidance, right? It's like, no, it's not that you're high maintenance, it's that we know you deserve it. We know you are worthy of that maintenance. Of course you are, because everybody is, right? Intrinsically, all humans are worthy of feeling good, right? We know you are. We just don't feel like we can deliver. So some people, again, and this comes back to character, of course, some people might then decide instead to lean into their avoidance in a negative way and maybe make the other person feel less worthy, less good enough. You know, I'm not saying that that's not possible. I'm sure, like, I'm sure many people do that, you know, uh, negging, making the other person feel bad about themselves so that it lowers their, you know, status in the avoidance eyes. Totally, of course. Again, though, I think that's more associated to character than it is to attachment. Because me, as somebody who has avoidance in my attachment, I wouldn't do that to somebody. And not because I'm like, oh, I'm so much better than these people. No, it's just that it doesn't align with my values and my morals, despite my avoidance. So realistically, what my avoidance would look like if I was deep in it and I couldn't, you know, couldn't be as aware of it as I am now. Um, ghosting, that's what it would be. Which doesn't feel any better, obviously, from the receiving end of it. But I would rather disappear than ever make anyone like say anything mean to someone to bring them down to my level obviously like that's just not who I am um but again ghosting's not great either I'm not saying that that's like a better alternative or whatever because it still hurts when you're on the receiving end of it of course <laughs> which I have been as well so I get I get both sides of it don't get me wrong but I wanted to like express this and share this because it really ultimately just comes down to the fact that it's not about your worth it's not that these avoidant people think you're awful or think you're unworthy or you're not good enough or that they don't want to change for you but they will change for somebody else because I know it might feel that way I know from the outside if you are dealing with someone who's an avoidant and they pull away from you they push you away and then you say you break up I'm talking uh, specifically with romantic relationships right now but say you break up and then you see them a month later with somebody new it's not that they've suddenly miraculously changed or that this new person is just the, the one to bring like all their good qualities out of them. No, that's that's very um, like that's very fantastical thinking, you know, because that's not how humans work. Realistically, what's happening is either. And again, this is from my own experience and what I've observed in people I know, people I've experienced these things with either. It's the early stages again, where it's fun, it's light, it's easy. And maybe in a couple of months where things deteriorate, <laughs> things get more intense, more intimate, the cycle will perpetuate, right? They will pull away, they'll push the other person away. And then the, you know, the cycle will continue. Or oftentimes what happens, you know, and this isn't good either, but oftentimes avoidance will sometimes then, if they, if they notice that, okay, I feel like I can't meet this person's expectations. I can't step up for this person. I can't be good enough for this person. Someone who they see as like, you know, maybe intimidating in like a good way, like someone they they value a lot. Um, instead, what they might do to not feel that wound, that pain of not being good enough in this person's presence, they might then choose people. And I mean this even platonically and romantically. They might choose to surround themselves with people who are, who they deem as less intimidating. So uh, people who they don't feel as threatened by because of how you know, how how good they might think they are. And that's not good either. Like, none of this stuff is is healthy stuff. No, none of this leads to healthy, aligned, secure connection with people, right? What ends up happening is that then an avoidant will maybe start dating somebody that they think, that, that that's maybe less good for them, but they feel like, well, that's all I'm good, I'm only good enough for these kinds of people. And then it leads to, you know, chaotic, unhealthy, destructive relationships. Same with friendships. You know, I'm only good enough to be around people like this. So therefore, this is as good as I can get because I can't step up for someone like the other person that I was friends with. You know, and it, again, it leads to bad friendships. So it's not good for anybody. So <laughs> I, I'm saying this just to give some insight on what uh, an avoidant is going, what's going on in an avoidance head when these things happen. And to give anyone on the receiving end of this avoidance the the realization that it's not about you it's not about your worth yes you're receiving the energy from the avoidant but it's really just based on what's going on within them how they're seeing how they're perceiving things because life is ultimately just how you perceive it right how you perceive what's going on around you is what then becomes your reality and for an avoidant everything that they perceive around them is just validating that they're not good enough and and yes i say this to both allow all of us to have empathy and sympathy for them because I am one of, I'm part of that community. <laughs> um, 
and also to hold them accountable because we have to hold ourselves accountable. But I'm also not saying it's easy, right? Because a lot of the comments I was getting on that TikTok video were saying like, well, just be better, just do it. And I've even caught myself saying that. And it's, it, yes, in on the surface level, it's just like, yeah, we'll just try better, just try more. But when you get down to the depths of it, it's really not that easy. You have to dismantle a lot of dark shit, <laughs> a lot of it. And you have to really work through those those wounds and those beliefs that you've been told your whole life growing up or the things that have just been indicated to you as being true about yourself. You have to really work through that. And it's not easy, especially because we are living lives that require effort to go to other things as well. We require effort to go to basic survival, to work and make money, to pay just to survive and exist. So a lot of effort's going to that. Imagine then how much more effort needs to go to then also uh, reprogramming your subconscious. Like, it's not easy. It's really not. Um, it might be simple. Sure, it can be as simple as, yeah, just do the work and you will get better. Of course. But it's not easy and it takes time. I have been in therapy for years. I don't know, since 2018. And, you know, it's taken a lot of time for me to even recognize the behaviors when they come up to, to really, like, pinpoint them when they arise. And then it's taken even longer to be able to communicate them, validate them even within myself and then communicate them to somebody. Like, you know, you know how hard that is <laughs> to, to tell somebody who you are dating or who you are friends with that I feel not good enough. And that's why I did this thing. It, it hurts your ego to say that. And I don't mean that in the sense of like, oh, egotism, but I just genuinely mean that that part of you that's trying to keep you safe. It hurts that part of you to express that you feel not good enough. Like it's almost like a betrayal to yourself to share that with someone because they might use that against you. You know, that's the, that's the mentality going on. So it's it's not easy. It's really not. And um, a lot of the comments that, under that video were also grateful that I shared this perspective. It helped them see their own avoidance. It helped them realize why their partner might have pulled away or pushed them away. And that was the point of that video. I just wanted to provide some insight. <laughs> but a lot of people took it personally, which... I get. I'm not trying to, to blame anyone. I understand it's painful when you're dealing with someone who's avoidant. But I think, again, the pain is not necessarily because of the avoidance behaviors, which of course, yes, they're not great behaviors. I'm not trying to justify them or anything. But I think it is also the attachment to your self-worth that you have with them. You've attached your self-worth to the person you're dating, the person you're friend. You've attached your self-worth to them. And that is is not how self-worth works. No one else is the gatekeeper of your self-worth. And I'm just saying this not to make you feel like you should be over it or get over it or let it go. No, I'm just saying this to provide some, like a tool for self, like to, to, to provide a tool for comfort and feeling okay when you are faced with avoidant people, because you will be, because of course, like people are everybody's different. Everybody has different backgrounds and stories and struggles and all that stuff. So you will be faced with these people. And we can't always just expect people to change no matter what. It's also about us realizing that these people are going to do things that are hurtful. And also, you know, because two things can coexist. And also it has nothing to do with me and my worth. And that's also not easy to understand and really internalize. It's something I'm also working on myself. It's not easy to remind yourself like, okay, yes, this person's doing something that on the surface feels like an attack on me and my value. It feels like they're ignoring me because they, you know, they deemed me not good enough. But the, but if you are truly thinking that and it's really hurting you deeply to feel that way, the question then is, okay, do I genuinely think I'm not good enough? Because if I, if you didn't think that about yourself, it wouldn't hurt as badly when this avoidant person does this behavior. And I'm saying this again as somebody who has experienced this from an avoidant person who has been both in the headspace of they're determining my worth and my value. And also then after, you know, again, years of therapy and, and work on it, realizing that no, my value and my worth is determined by me. So when you see it from that perspective, an avoidance behavior is very much just, you can, it, it, there's like a level of, I can see it from like a, a place of sadness now at times, right? Because I understand it from my perspective and I can also then separate it from my self-worth and I see it for what it is. It's a, you know, a scared child who doesn't know how to respond to intimacy and connection. And that's sad. It's sad because obviously they want intimacy and connection and they don't know how to maintain it because it's scary for them. It doesn't mean I have to settle for it. It doesn't mean anybody has to settle for that behavior and make it work no matter what and help them change. No, then that leads into uh, wounded bird syndrome. You don't have to do that at all. You have to do what's the best and most respectful thing for you 
but you can still have empathy and, and compassion and understanding for somebody else. It doesn't have to be uh, like um, a fight for your worth with this person. It, has, it doesn't have to be a like a, a power play situation where one person wins and one person loses. It doesn't have to be like that at all. It can just be this person can't handle intimacy and connection and I need somebody who can. And yes, it was painful that they did this thing. It was hurtful. Um, and I'm, you know, and I'm letting myself feel that and I'm letting myself be angry at them for doing something painful, but also it has nothing to do with my worth. And therefore, if I think I'm more worthy, I'm worthy of something more than this, then that's what I'm going to go after. And I have to let this person go. And that's what it is, you know? And again, none of this is easy. None of it is easy. It's all so difficult to work through all these things. But again, the intention of this podcast episode, the intention of that video was not to justify an avoidance behavior and to say, well, you, you know, this is why, so you should just put up with it and deal with it and and date them anyway. Or no, I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying we should all be doing what's the healthiest thing for us and the most aligned and most respectful things for us, obviously. Um, it's just to give perspective. It's just to give you insight into why they might be doing that and to show you that it's probably not because of your worth. It's never really about your worth because again, your worth is not dictated by anybody else. Nobody's telling you whether or not you're worthy. I mean, they can, but unless you decide to give them that power, then it doesn't matter what they say. You know, obviously when you're a kid and you're told this stuff by adults or whatever, yeah, you internalize that stuff, of course. And you have to work through it as you get older so that you can uh, maintain a life that feels best for you and that you don't put all your worth into other people's hands, of course. Again, not easy. <laughs> I get it. Um, but I just wanted to share that perspective so that those who are on the receiving end of avoidance don't feel like this person is doing this specifically because they hate me. They find me unvaluable. That I'm not good enough. They started dating someone new. So that person must be better. No, and none of that is true. Because again, you don't know all the details and you can't read people's minds. Ultimately, the only thing that you're responding to is what your mind is telling you about the, the data and information that you're getting right now. Right. And we have to all step out of our heads at times and see things for what they are. You only have a limited amount of information. And I'm giving you an extra little piece right now, hopefully, that is helpful and valuable. Because if you are not an avoidant, if you're very anxious and you've never experienced avoidance before, you have no idea that this is probably what's going on in an avoidance head. And I'm hoping that by me explaining this, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, that makes a little bit more sense now. That makes me feel a little bit better because, yeah, that makes sense that it's not really about me because they have their own shit going on. They have, they see the world in a very skewed way, you know, from because of their fear of intimacy, you know? And again, you don't have to settle for that, obviously. Um, it is also up to the person who is um, experiencing or who's giving these avoidant tendencies to do the work. It is up to them. And just because they aren't and they can't doesn't mean you have to pick up the slack for them. Obviously not. But yeah, I just wanted to talk about this for both anyone who is avoidant, who maybe doesn't understand why they do the things they do. And this can hopefully provide some insight as well so they can start doing the work that they need to do. And also for anyone who has been on the receiving end of it, because I understand it's painful. It's not easy to, to deal with. Um, and you deserve to have the kind of connections that you genuinely want. And you're, you are worthy of them you've decided that you're worthy of them. So you do not have to put up with someone who's not giving that to you, even though you like them. They might be a great person. And that's the thing. It's like some avoidance are good people and they, they you know, they, deep down they have, they're, you know, they have a good heart, but they just don't know how to overcome the avoidance. So it's not a character thing. And I know that's the, the impulse is to attach it to them being a bad person. Like that's the only thing that makes sense in your mind when you don't really have the the intel or insight into an avoidance experience, it's easier to just say, well, they're just, they're just a bad person. They're just shitty. They just hate me, even though they said all these nice things about me and they did these nice things for me. You know, it kind of this cognitive dissonance happens, but it is easier to just assume that it's because this person just, oh, they just hate me. They're bad. They're awful. It's like, is that the way you want to view the world and view people? For me, it's not. I, I don't want to have that as my, um, my belief of how people function. I, I I would rather, if if I can, I would rather find evidence that proves that, you know, most people are intrinsically good and they're trying. And also sometimes they they still make mistakes. They still mess up. They still can't get over certain issues that they have. Right. And it doesn't have anything to do with them 
trying to hurt you on purpose. And it has nothing to do with your worth and your value because that is determined by you ultimately. So yeah, this was, <laughs> this is a bit of like an intenser topic, I think, because it does create, it has, there's so much vitriol around the topic because of how painful it is to deal with avoidant people. And I get that, but I just wanted to talk about it a bit so that we can all have a bit more understanding together <laughs> and hopefully find a bit of peace and solace and, um, and recognize that we get to also determine whether or not we allow these people into our lives, right? Because also some comments would say, um, some comments on the video were saying that um, I dealt with so many people like this and they always do this and they, and I'm not trying to negate that experience. It sucks. That's, that's so unfortunate that you've had so many experiences with people who that do this to you, obviously. But for me, in, in that scenario, and I have been in that situation as well, not, I haven't dated that many people, but when I've noticed a pattern repeat itself like that, where it's like, okay, I've seen myself kind of letting these people into my life or they're coming into my life. The question then is, okay, at what point also am I, am I allowing this to transpire? At what point also am I finding myself gravitating towards avoiding people? And what does that say about me ultimately? And what I believe about myself? Because there is that, there is that extra piece in there too. But that might be a topic for a different uh, podcast episode, but that piece is in there as well. And ultimately, all people are just mirrors for us to get a bit of more insight and knowledge about ourselves, right? Like that's the point of relationships in the grand scheme of things, to learn more about us through the connection we have with others. So yeah, I hope this was interesting. I hope this was helpful. I hope it was somewhat comforting. Um, I hope it didn't make you more angry. <laughs> Uh, that's really not my intention. Again, it's not to justify any of this behavior. Um, but yeah, I will be back again next week with another episode. 